that you meditate, try not to have too narrow an idea of what can happen during the meditation. Some really good things can happen, and some really bad ones can happen, i.e. really pleasant, really unpleasant. Maybe the mind can go deeper than you've thought. Or when the mind is going really well, it might suddenly f flip and start wandering all over the place. So all kinds of things can happen. This means you have to be watchful. And on the one hand, be heedful. Look after what you're doing, make sure you stick with it. And then try to push yourself a little bit more in whatever seems to be the right direction. All too often we have the, the fear that if you put a lot of extra effort into the practice, it's not going to pay off, that you're going to run up against a wall. And so we tend to hold back. Or we may have a very limited idea, limited idea of what we're capable of. I remember talking to a woman many years back, and she said, you know, I've never really taken seriously the idea that I could ever gain awakening. And that's sad. All the potentials that are needed for awakening are right here. You've got the body breathing, you've got your mind thinking and aware. You've got all the different aggregates, you've got all the different types of fabrication. Everything's happening right here. It's just a matter of putting it together just right. Maybe part of the problem is you just narrow yourself down to a little tiny corner and keep yourself cornered. So it's important that you open things up a little bit. Think of the breath going places it's never gone before, or at least you've never thought of it going there. When an obstacle comes up that normally sets you off, think of the possibility that you don't have to go off with it this time. It's very easy to develop some bad habits as a meditator that place limitations on yourself. to just try to air out your mind for the time being. Say all kinds of things are possible. And particularly the, the steadiness of your gaze. Try to improve that, because that makes a huge difference in things. It's very easy to focus on the breath for a while, and then go off for a bit, and then come back for a while, and then go off for a bit. There are these little bumps in the breath that tend to knock us off. We'll see if you can ride right through the bumps. I know some people, when they start watching the mind, begin to realize that they have a tendency, say when the breath has gone out and before it comes back in again, that's the time when the mind tends to wander. And maybe go off just a little bit and then it'll come back. So how about making up your mind you're going to stay with it all the way through that that little gap. Or wherever it is you tend to notice that you have your little lapses of, of mindfulness, your lapses of awareness, alertness. Try to ride right through them, drill right through them. After all, we're here to attain what we haven't previously attained, to realize what we haven't previously realized. That means we have to learn how to do things we haven't previously done. If you want to get special results, you have to do special things. And this doesn't necessarily mean that you have to push yourself to limit in terms of 
knocking yourself out. You want to find a way of putting energy into the meditation in a way that gives energy back so you can keep recycling it. That's the kind of focus you want to develop. So try to give yourself to the meditation a little bit more than you have in the past. And this is one of the reasons why generosity is one of the prerequisites for meditating. You learn from experience that the good things come in life when you give. You don't just sit there and wait for them to come or demand that they come to you. And your first thought isn't what you're going to get out of this. The first thought should be, what do I give? Then you do have to give up some of your preconceived notions. And as you find out, you have to give up a lot of your preconceived notions about yourself. And that can be interpreted in a lot of ways. One of the basic principles of appropriate attention is that you put aside any questions about who am I, what am I, do I exist, do I not exist. Then there's another sutta, I've forgotten the number now, it's in the Anguttara, where the Buddha says, you put aside the assumption that you're good, you put aside the assumption that you're bad. You may have a sense of where your limitations have been in the past, but they don't have to stay there. You can push them. Try to realize where your strengths are and build on those, capitalize on those. And so really focus on and just really be with the breath right now and try to be there as consistently and steadily as you can. Because it is the quality of your effort that's going to make a difference. This means riding herd on the mind, not allowing even the le least little bit of wandering off. One of the best ways of developing this kind of total giving over to the meditation is in the course of the day have some really short meditation periods, just five minutes. And tell yourself, I'm going to settle down and stay right here for five minutes. And that's all the time. Because there's this tendency to tell yourself when you've got an hour to meditate, well, just have a gradual kind of gliding down the way a glider takes its time, settling down, settling down, finally lands. And usually we land just before the end of the hour. The mind lacks a sense of urgency. So to give it more urgency, tell yourself you've got five minutes. Settle down. And once it's down, you're going to stay right here. And that develops a good habit. You don't wander around first sniffing the flowers, looking at the birds. Basically dawdling before you get to work. Tell yourself, right now, settle down. You should know by now where your most comfortable spot is. So go right there. And try to observe what kind of breathing feels especially good. Well, once you've observed that, then keep applying that knowledge each time you sit, right away. You can try to go right there as fast as you can, and then stay there. There's a lot more to be learned from the meditation if you can settle down quickly, rather than just gradually coming down and say, oh, just as the mind was settling down, the, the bell rang. have a different mental picture of the hour. If part of the mind asks, do we have half an hour left, 15 minutes, say, don't ask, don't ask. It's totally irrelevant. You're here, right here, right now. 
And as for your anticipations and assumptions of what's going to happen in the hour, drop them all. Don't totally give yourself to what you're doing right now. And the more total, total you're giving of yourself, the more likely that you actually will encounter something new. may not be awakening, but at least it's something new in the meditation, a possibility that you might not have previously conceived. Things can happen. Your duty is just to try to develop the, the conditions that allow these things to happen. So if you find that your anticipations are placing a limit on that, drop them. And don't hold back from giving your best. <laughs>